Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 in module 4 we are working on lesson number 29 and that means that we are trying to connect division by a unit fraction to division by one tenth and one hundredth. Tonight's lesson is a little confusing maybe, perhaps. Um, we think about our fractions and our decimals here a little differently um, than, for instance, our parents might have thought about them. We're thinking about them in unit form more frequently. Um, we've had practice at doing this, obviously in third grade and fourth grade and earlier in fifth grade, but it still may not be the most natural thing to some of us. So feel free to pause, uh, re-watch, think about, um, repeat, and go back and forth to see if you can, uh, can glean from our explanations here tonight um, a better understanding of tonight's homework. Let's look at a couple problems from number one. Number one, uh, directions are simple, divide. Rewrite each expression as a division sentence with a fraction divisor and fill in the blanks. The first one is done for you. Well, before we go on to problems 1b and 1d, let's take a look at how they did the example. So they start off with this problem, four divided by one tenth. And I noticed that the very first thing they do is they rewrite the decimal part as a fraction. So they rewrite 4 divided by 1 tenth again, but this time with a fraction. And then they came up with 40. How did they do that? Hmm. Well, I know when I do division, right, I'm taking my original amount, right, and I'm saying uh, how many of this divisor are in that number, right? And so I think that's what they're doing here. They say there are 10 tenths in one whole, right? Oh, that's something that we just know, right? There are 10 tenths that make up any one whole. So there must be 40 tenths in four holes. In other words, if this question it were to be asked, we started with four holes and we wanted to know how many tenths are inside of that, right? How many little tenths can we pull out of that? Then that's the question they're asking, right? How many tenths are there in four holes? And they say, since we know that there are 10 tenths in one hole, we must know that there are 40 tenths in four holes. And that actually solves the problem, right? That if we started right here uh, with four holes and we pulled out one tenth at a time, we would pull out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We could pull out 40 tenths before we would be completely done uh, dividing up our four holes. And that's the answer, 40. So let's see if we can do that with 1b and 1d. Let's see, this one is very similar, right? 6 divided by 1 tenth. Well, one thing I want to do is I want to right away, I want to write it 6 divided by 1 tenth. I want to divide, write it in fractional form. Maybe that'll help me sort of figure that out. Oh, and then I notice that they have the very same sentence here. There are how many tenths in one hole? Well, there are 10 tenths in one hole. I know that, right? So let's see, how many tenths must there be in six holes? Well, if there's 10 tenths in one hole, then there must be, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. There must be 60 tenths in six holes. So that's our answer, right? That we could pull 60 tenths out of six holes. 60 tenths out of six holes. And note here that if we checked our division with multiplication, 60 times one tenth, we would get... 6, which would double check our answer. Awesome. Let's take a look at problem 1D. 1D asks a slightly more complicated question, 12.8 or 12 and 8 tenths divided by a tenth. Again, I want to rewrite that as 12.8 divided by 1 tenth. Okay? Let's see. Now they're, they're going to shortcut. They're going to go straight to this. How many tenths are there in 12 holes? Well, let's see, that's twice as many as six holes, right? There were 60 tenths in six holes, so there must be 120 tenths in 12 holes. Oh, and then I'm noticing something. How many tenths are there in eight tenths? Well, geez, it's right there, right? Um, eight tenths, there must just be eight, right? There must be eight tenths in eight tenths. Oh, I see what they're doing. Okay, so if we know how many tenths there are in the 12 holes, and we know how many tenths there are in the 8 tenths, we can just add those up. Let's see, I think that means that there's 128 tenths in 12.8. 128 tenths in 12.8. And I'm noticing something too, which is it looks like we're when we do this division, we're just moving our place values over one, right? That in, uh, in the case of this number right here, we had 1, 10, and that became 100. We had two ones, that became two tens, and we had eight tenths, and that became eight ones, all because we moved one place value when we divided by ten, right? We moved one place value to the left, one, pl one larger place value. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at problems from number two and see if we can solve some of those as well. 
I'm going to leave some of the early problems for you in, in problem number two, but I want to look at 2D. 2D says 7.2, or 7 and 2 tenths, divided by 1 tenth. And I want to go ahead and rewrite this, 7.2 divided by 1 tenth. And that's going to remind me that we're going to do the exact same work that we did the last time, right? We're going to say, when we look at that 7 holes, oops, when we look at that 7 holes there, right here, that's going to be 70 tenths, right? And when we look at the 2 tenths, well, that's just 2 tenths, and that's our answer, right? 72. Again, we've moved everything one place value to the left. Our 7 1s has become 7 tens, and our 2 tenths has become 2 ones. We can think of it either way. We can think of it as moving this number on our place value chart. We can think of this as decomposing 7 ones into tenths, that's 70 tenths, and decomposing 2 tenths into tenths, that's 2 tenths. But either way, we're going to get 72 tenths out of that number. Let's take a look at one more example. Let's take a look at one, or I'm sorry, 2H. 4.37 divided by, and I'm going to change this to the fractional form, right? Divided by hundredths. And so now we have a new kind of question, right? Which is how many hundredths could we get if we were to divide up these four wholes, these three tenths, and these seven hundredths? And again, we should be able to do this place value by place value, right? Four wholes is going to have 400 hundredths, right? And 3 tenths is going to have 30 hundredths. And, most easily, 7 hundredths is got exactly 7 hundredths. And that's our answer, right? And again, I'm noticing that pattern, right? Which is that when we divide by 100, that means we're going to move two place values, and our 4 ones becomes 4 hundredths, our 3 tenths becomes 3 tens, and our seven hundredths becomes seven ones. We've moved every single one of these numbers two place values to the left, two place values larger, because we're pulling out these incredibly small fractional units, just little one one hundredth at a time. So that's all for tonight's homework. That's four problems that I hope get you going on some of the various problems that you've got in your homework. Please join me again next time for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Take care.